okay, so part two continues on. And so now what we do is we're going to look at the mapping here. And this, this diagram is going to help us here. So we've got um, this mapping. So notice this same mapping from before. Um, so we've got this diagram that's going to help us um, as a road map. Okay. So T hat represents the same transformation as we were talking about before, but with respect to a different basis B. Okay. Um, now we can find this basis. Now we follow this diagram up from the, the left lower hand to the left upper hand. Um, that shows that P inverse, right? That P inverse is equal to this, right? The representation with respect from B to epsilon two of the identity. So that's going this direction. And uh, that tells us that, well, okay. So given that, if, it, if P, this inverse is this, right? So then the first column, right? The first column of this um, matrix by the, by the definition is going to give us this. So the representation with respect to epsilon two um, of the identity of beta one, which is just going to be the representation with respect to epsilon two of beta one. And that's going to give it, that's the first column, right? Two negative one. Now the same thing goes for the second column. Again, given the definition for matrix uh, representation. Okay. So by that definition of the map, or excuse me, given, yeah, by the definition of the matrix representation of a map, um, its first column is equal to this. And likewise, the second column. So with respect to the standard basis of any vector is represented by itself. So the first basis element beta one is going to be the first column of uh, P inverse. And the same goes for the other one. And so our basis vectors are going to be just the columns of the inverse. So it's going to be two, negative one, negative one, one. Okay. Now, since the matrices T and T hat are both uh, represent the transformation T, both reflect the action of what? What we saw before. And so, so then, let me rewrite this over here. So then what do we get? We get this. Um, how do I want to write that? Let's write it here. We get this product is equal to T times the representation with respect to epsilon two
Okay? So we get the representation with respect to epsilon 2 to epsilon 2 of the mapping T times the representation with respect to epsilon 2 of the vector E2, or to E1, is equal to T times uh, the matrix T times representation with respect to epsilon 2 of E2, which is then just equal to 2 times the representation Two times the representation with respect to epsilon two of the, the uh, vector e one, but that's not all. So we also have this. And again, why? Uh, because T and T hat both represent the transformation T. So they're both, again, uh, they reflect the action of taking T of um, E1 is equal to 2 times the vector E1. Now, both, uh, but while in those two equations we see here the eigenvalue twos are the same the vector representations are different um, and what we're looking at is Well, actually, if we look at that, so these these are going to be different because the representation with respect to epsilon two. of E1 is 1, 0. Right? So remember, this is, this is the vector 1, 0, where the representation with respect to B of E1 is 1, 1. Okay, that's the difference. So here's the, the example of where they have the same eigenvalue, right? But there's different eigenvectors. So when the vector, so when the matrix representing the transformation is T, then it assumes that column vectors are representations with respect to epsilon two. However, T hat assumes that column vectors are representations with respect to B, and so the column vectors that 
get doubled are different. And so in the next again, we're going to see the basic tool for finding eigenvectors and eigenvalues.